winter driving requires your car to be in first class mechanical condition. The engine should be tuned for easy starts and dependable performance. The cooling system cleaned and antifreeze added. The exhaust system checked for leaks. Windshield wiper blades replaced if streaking. Heater and defroster adjusted for peak efficiency. Battery fully charged. And special emergency equipment ready in the trunk. Sand or traction mats, tow chain, shovel, emergency light, jumper cables, and tire chains. Don't forget to put on snow tires. And make sure the front tires have a good deep tread to help control the car on snow or ice. Studded tires are also helpful on ice and provide more traction than regular tires, even more than snow tires, but less than chains. Check when studded tires are permitted in your state. Car's ready and all you have to do is wait for the first snow. And sometimes you don't have to wait too long. There it is. The weatherman was right for a change and all of your preparations have paid off. But let's not be hasty. Clean off the snow before you move the car. The windshield. Loosen up the wiper blades, they might be frozen. Start the motor and give the heater and defroster a chance to warm up. Now you can brush the snow off around the car. The rear view mirror, the side windows, and be sure to open one of the windows a little to keep the glass from fogging. Clear the rear window, the tail lights and license plate and on around the other side. Buckle up for safety, belts and shoulder harness, and have your passengers do the same. Now, how about getting started in deep snow? The plowing crews must get a big kick out of doing this, but it's no pleasure for the driver. If you don't want to dig out, put on chains or call for a tow. You can try rocking. First, swing your wheels from side to side to clear the snow away. Get the car moving backwards and forwards without spinning the wheels by shifting between forward and reverse. But take it easy. You may damage the automatic transmission. Give the car a little working space until you have enough momentum to carry you through the drift. When chains are necessary, put them on. It's not so bad if you know how. And now you're ready to take off. Every year, the Committee on Winter Driving Hazards meets under the auspices of the National Safety Council. This committee is made up of experts from the automotive industry, researchers from universities, and government officials who are conducting traction tests at Stevens Point, Wisconsin, in their search for more practical methods to solve winter driving problems and to report to the driving public. As part of its test program, the committee has evaluated the performance of traction equipment such as snow tires, studded tires, and chains. Some of these findings are presented in this chart, which shows that snow tires offer a small improvement in pulling ability on ice as compared with regular highway tires. 
Note that studded snow tires provide about three times the pulling ability and reinforced tire chains about seven times the pulling ability of regular tires. As might be expected, on loosely packed snow, snow tires provide one and one half times as much pull as regular tires, while tire chains produce about four times the pulling traction of regular tires. Once you're underway, make certain you can see where you're going. Don't use the windshield washers if the temperature is below freezing unless you are certain the washer antifreeze is adequate. Otherwise, you'll suddenly have a blinding sheet of ice and you'll have to stop to scrape it off. Now that you can see where you're going, get the feel of the road and stay at speeds where you can control your car. Ice is twice as slippery at 30 degrees as it is at zero. The tires can't grip. There's no control. Slow down to a speed where the tread will help you to keep the car under control. Take the curves slowly. If you oversteer, straighten out and then feel your way into the turn again. Too much gas on a curve and the rear wheels will spin out, sending you into an uncontrolled skid. You may swap ends and end up going down the highway backwards. Ease up on the gas to straighten out. If the rear wheels start to skid, turn the front wheels in the direction of the skid. If rear wheels go left, steer left. But remember, don't oversteer and stay away from the brakes. Locked wheels only make the skid worse. When you have to accelerate to get over the next hill, do so gently. An easy, sure touch on the accelerator so the tires will bite in. Ease up as you approach the crest. And then you won't be going too fast in case there's a surprise waiting for you, just out of sight. Watch for the danger spots, driveways. Curbs, hills and snow drifts. intersections, shady spots where the sun has not melted the ice. Slow down and have your car under control before you get to the danger spots. Remember to drive slowly on icy and slippery roads. Try the brakes once in a while to get the feel of the road. Not when you're in tight quarters, but when you have plenty of space. How about stopping on ice or snow? You can do it if you don't panic. Don't lock your wheels. Locked wheels slide and you lose steering control. When you want to slow down or stop, pump the brakes. Rapidly. On, off, on, off. Allowing the wheels to roll helps you to steer and keep going in the right direction. Don't use the parking brakes. It locks the rear wheels and suddenly the world looks like this. Adjust your speed to weather and road conditions and allow plenty of space between you and the car ahead. You may need it.
When stopping as well as starting, snow tires, studded tires, and chains may well be that margin of safety. Here are some test facts showing braking distances on glare ice. With regular highway tires, the braking distance on ice is nearly nine times longer than the braking distance on dry pavement. Snow tires offer little or no help. With studded snow tires, the braking distance is about seven times the distance on dry pavement. The greatest improvement is obtained with reinforced tire chains on the rear wheels, which reduce the braking to about four and one half times the distance on dry pavement. But remember, it still takes four to nine times further to stop on ice than it does on the dry pavement. Well, what about winter driving? It's up to you. You are the important factor. If you don't have to drive, stay home. But when you realize your responsibility to yourself and the other drivers on the highways, you will be a better and safer winter driver. It's up to you.